me you got soul inside those new shoes And you can rock and roll with an attitude So good, so fresh, just the way you like it Welcome to the USA, welcome to Miami Beach, and welcome to the Longines Global Champions Tour. Show me you got soul inside those new shoes, and you can rock and roll with an attitude. So good, so fresh, just the way you like it. And welcome back to another video. Welcome to the USA. I'm currently here in sunny Miami, Florida, and you might be wondering, Esme, why are you on the beach? This is an equestrian channel. Well, what if I told you that this beach here today is being the world's largest arena because we have some top class show jumping here by the sea. Welcome to the Longines Global Champions Tour. Something I love about the Longines Global Champions Tour here in Miami is that anybody on the beach can rock up and watch these pro horses and riders. Some people here might have never seen a horse in their life and you can get so close up to the action. Over the next few days, I'm going to be learning a little bit more about the Longines Global Champions Tour because this is actually my first ever time seeing it in person. I'm also going to be at the London event, so I'm really looking forward to that. I'm also going to be doing a meetup, so looking forward to seeing all of you guys there. But behind me, we currently have the horses and riders in their teams warming up, getting ready for the five star. Now, the best way I can describe the team event is it's a little bit like football teams. So we have horse and rider combinations, from different countries teamed up together in a group competing against each other. So they're currently warming up behind me and the class should start any second. So let's go and watch the five star show jumping. The Global Champions League is part of the Longines Global Champions Tour, an incredible show jumping series that takes the world's top riders across the continents to compete in amazing locations. There are 16 teams made up of six individual riders who compete in groups against each other. The Global Champions League teams are made up of the best riders from different countries, pitted against each other in a contest where team spirit and team tactics come strongly into play. Each team also has an under 25 athlete, two of whom I'll be chatting to later on. This first day at Miami is run as a qualifier, with the top team going last in the Super Saturday finale. Welcome to another beautiful day here in sunny Miami, Florida for the Longines Global Champions Tour. Behind me here, we have the funnel with horses getting ready to go into the arena, but how about I take you to the stables and we go and meet these four-legged stars. Just waiting for a horse crossing now. How cool is that? We're now heading into the FEI stables now. Let's have a look around. I'm currently here in the FEI stables and the first thing I thought when I walked in was, oh my goodness, it is so nice and cool in here, especially compared to the Florida heat outside. It's also really shady and air conditioned, so lovely for the horses. But anyway, let's go and find a groom and find out a little bit more about what it takes to look after these top equines. So I'm now here with Nikki, who is Gare Gullickson's groom. So Nikki, tell me a little bit more about your daily routine here with the horses. What do you do first thing in the morning? Um, the first in the morning, I'm coming and I give a morning cuddle, yeah. of course. And then I feed, I get the grain, clean the boxes, change the water. And when my boxes are clean, then the horses are getting hay. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's basically my routine. And then we are going either for lunch, yeah. Easy jog or for a hand walk. 
Awesome. So that's like first thing in the morning, like 5 a.m. they go out in the arena. Yes, sometimes 5, sometimes 5.30. Yeah. Depends on the schedule. But yeah, as soon as it's possible, so they are not getting really burned. Yeah. And tell me a little bit more about the horses that you have here. What are their personalities like? I have two horses with me. So this is uh, Grandino. That's oh, my, uh, my stallion. He's in this moment here my best horse. He did really good in the big class the first day. He was placed as number nine. Oh, awesome. He's a stallion, so sometimes he can be really loud. Yes. <laughs> but he is actually really easy to handle. Oh, that's good. So I'm, I'm really happy with his personality because you can really talk with him. So, oh, um, he seems really sweet. Hello. Yes, and You're then I the have a little chestnut. It's a best boy. Oh. That's a little bit of family horse uh, because first Gar's daughter had him, then his son. Oh, wow. And uh, now we are trying uh, with Gair, but for now it's getting really good, so I hope oh, he's awesome. my third horse in the team. And how do you deal with going to lots of different countries for the Longines Global Champions Tour? Especially here in Miami, Florida, it's quite warm, it's quite hot. How do you keep the horses cool? <laughs> I think we really love to travel, especially yeah. me. Yes. And uh, luckily there is a really good team behind the Global, so they are really helpful. And uh, my horses, they're living in Norway. Yeah. So they are used to travel a lot. And what is your routine with the horses after they've been ridden? Um, they have to be cooled down, so uh, shower with the shampoo. After jumping, I'm using the ice boots to yeah. keep the like sound. And then after, as a bandages with some products on the leg, so. Now, Grandino here is a grey, and I'm actually an owner of four greys. The question that everybody wants to know is, how do you get him so clean? At first, I'm so sorry for you to have four of them. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> I don't know how I've done it to myself, but I have. He, he's a really, he, we call him Mr. Pig. Oh, yeah? Yes, and he will really love to roll down. I the first need, yeah, I need to call straight. my horses Mr. Pig as well, because... So. They are very dirty. <laughs> yeah, but um, bath and bath and bath and the yeah. good uh, shampoo for the grey horses. Yeah, three four times in the day. That's yeah. that's the way. Oh wow! Okay. Nothing else. <laughs> that is that is dedication. I've got to say. Yeah. Oh. But the question is, does he does he like his baths? Does he find them quite relaxing? Yes, and... he loves he yeah. loves to be bath. So oh. That's that's easy. Yeah. Oh, what a sweetie. <laughs> So it sounds like you have a rather busy day, you know, getting up early, finishing late. How many hours do you reckon you do in a day then? How many hours have a day having? Yep. <laughs> a lot. A lot. A lot. <laughs> no, we are sometimes uh, starting 5, sometimes 5.30. Today I start at 6.30. So oh, a I bit of a lion then. A yeah. long sleep. Yep. Um, sometimes I have to ride at 6 a.m. Yesterday we sit on the first horse at 6. Yep. And when we have an evening late class, so we are sometimes in the midnight still in the stable oh, because wow. it takes quite a long time to give the horses everything they need. So they really have sort of around the clock care here. It's, I, I wish they are paying me for hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, well, they definitely look like they're having the best time here. Thank you so much for the interview and for Thank your time. You. Thank you so much. Oh, what a sweetie. Yeah, he's really nice. I'm now here with international show jumper Jack Whitaker. Now, Jack, you have had, you're a busy man. You've had quite a lot of success, especially um, the other weekend in Germany for the World Cup finals. How was that? Yeah, no, I had, I had quite a successful week in the end. I went, I went there with high hopes, obviously, but not much. Uh, I wasn't expecting to be anywhere within, within a chance and going into the final day, I'd been on the podium. So uh, yeah, no, I was happy with it. Oh, well, congratulations for that. We're now here in Miami, so you get around. What's it like to be at the show here? Yeah, it, twice. It's like it's just it's a show like no other. It's a it's completely mental to me. We're on the beach here in in Miami. And how do you prepare your horses for an atmosphere like this? Uh, you can't really prepare them for atmosphere like this. Every horse is different. I like I have one mare there. She's not taking to it very well. She's, she's not really settling down great. And the other lad, he's he's taking it all in his stride. So he's just got to take each horse by horse, I guess. And tell me a little bit more about the horses that you have here. I have a Q Pavarotti. She's a she's a ten year old uh, bay mare. She's a fantastic jumper, but as I say, she's a bit she's a bit sharp in the head, and she's uh, she sees and hears everything. So there's a lot to see and a lot to hear here. So she's uh, so she's taken a while for her to settle down into it, but she's uh, hopefully she'll be fine by the Grand Prix. Now, obviously, you are an absolutely incredible rider to be competing here. But um, I actually asked on Instagram, and there were thousands of questions. And um, what a lot of people ask is, what are you currently working on? Because you know, not everybody's perfect. Yeah. No, uh, what am I currently working on? 
probably uh, trying to stay inside the time allows a lot more. Okay. I, I had a time fault in Leipzig, which really, I would have been on the podium if I didn't have a time fault. So that really, that was a big, big downer for me. So it's all about speed then? Yeah, basically. Um, but also, something that I think you might need to work on is yeah. your concentration yeah. phase. Because yeah. I've been um, taking photos and videos of you here at the show. And um, yeah, but the thing is, when I'm jumping, I can do the smiling, you know, I can pull the nice face. Maybe not, maybe the show jumping I need to work on. <laughs> so we need to take a leaf out of each other's books. Yeah, yeah. Also, I've seen that you're quite big on TikTok as well. Have you been enjoying that? Yep, <laughs> Thor thoroughly enjoying it. I've been getting a fair bit of stick from all my mates, but seems to be going well, so. Gotta love it, gotta yeah. love it. Um, and also, you come from a family of show jumpers. Have you always wanted to do this as your job? I mean, it wasn't always. Uh, that's, yeah, from a young age, obviously, yeah, but it, was, it wasn't what it was never forced upon me. It was something that it just naturally happened, and I'm, I'm glad it did. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for all your time, and best of luck for the rest of the show. No worries, thank you. I'm now here with international show jumper Lily Atwood. So, Lily, you compete for the Stockholm Hearts, and um, you're actually going to be competing later. How does it feel being on a team? But also, you know, this is your first um, Longines Global Champions Tour. How does it feel to be here in Miami? Yeah, it's amazing. Uh, starting off with obviously an incredible venue, Bright by the Sea. Being on Stockholm Hearts is great. You know, I've got a good team with so many people around me who can support me, and I'm definitely going to learn a lot this year. And tell me about your other teammates, the horses. What horses do you have here today, and what are their personalities like? I have two chestnuts, uh, Horton and Ginger. Aww. Ginger's a chestnut mare. She's a real chestnut mare. Yeah. Uh, will bite you all the time. <laughs> um, a bit of a cheeky one then. Yeah, she's, but she's such a fighter in the yeah. ring. And Horton, he's cheeky, but he's quite spooky, so he needs to you know, get into the atmosphere a bit and adapt. Especially here in Miami, there is a lot going on. There's people playing football, there were some paragliders going over. How do you prepare your horses for such an atmosphere like this? Well, I don't think you really can. I think it's a big shock for us riders and the horses. And, you know, just try and show them as much as we can and get them really relaxed and happy in the atmosphere is all we can really do. Go out there and be confident. Yes, yeah. So high, I would kiss the sky. It'd be so, so right, so right, so right. If I could only fly, I would fly so high. I would kiss the sky. It'd be so, so. Welcome to the last day here in Miami, Florida for the Longines Global Champions Tour. It's a little bit windy today. Um, the last few days, I'm not gonna lie, I have been waking up rather early. My internal body clock doesn't really know what time it is because I'm from the UK, but then before that I was in South Africa and Botswana. So I've been waking up pretty early the last four days, but that has meant that because I've been here early, I've come down to the beach, had a little look at the view. First thing in the morning, there's this gorgeous blue hour. And then when the sun rises and the golden light comes through, it's just absolutely beautiful. However, I'm not the only person that's been at the beach bright and early in the mornings. All the horses and riders have been here too, warming up their horses, giving them a little bit of a leg stretch, ready for the classes ahead. And because it's Super Saturday, the pressure is going to be on because these two classes, they're big ones and I cannot wait to watch them. But because it's early this morning, I'm gonna go and get some breakfast and then I'll see you guys for maybe a little bit of a tour around the shopping area. The 
the sun is now high here in Miami and I thought while I'm here I'd take you guys on a little behind the scenes tour around the horse show here for the Longines Global Champions Tour. So to the left of me we have this sort of horse passageway pathway and that leads down to the stables that we've already been to but if we go to my right here we actually have this lovely shaded area. Now this is the sort of collecting ring where some of the horses might be waiting before their warm up or just you know to get that sea view while they're waiting as well. You might be wondering why I'm standing outside a white truck. Now I'm going to be taking you deep deep behind the scenes because with a huge horse show like the Longines Global Champions Tour this needs to be broadcasted live across the world so everyone can see it. So I'm going to be taking you inside and showing you the pros at work. All right, welcome inside. I'm going to be a little bit quiet because I don't want to disturb anybody. But if we come round, the best way I can describe it in here, it feels a little bit like I'm at mission control. There's at least about 12 people in here. So we have the producers, we have the directors. Um, everyone has little mics on, so they're talking to the camera crew, making sure that the right thing is being filmed and is on screen because this is all for GCTV. So if you'd like to watch any of the other shows live, then be sure to watch it there. But oh my goodness, how cool is this? I don't think I've ever seen so many screens in my life. I'm not gonna lie, it does make me feel a little bit inadequate, but I am, I'm not doing anything live. So, you know, the video that you guys are seeing now, I would have gone back home, edited it on my computer, but here they're doing it all right now. So it must be pretty high pressure in here, you know? There are so many screens. Anyway, we'll leave the pros to it and get back to the show. We're now out into the sun and I've got to say in that shade it was a lot cooler but we're now by the main warm-up area here we have some of the horses and riders getting ready for their next class but let me take you around the corner because there is a lot more to see. So something you don't normally see at a horse show is a beach there are lots of people here maybe on their vacation or holiday sunbathing enjoying miami but some people who maybe have never seen a horse are now here watching some of the world's top horses and riders in action we also being at a beach have a lifeguard here too something else that you might not see at an ordinary horse show but how cool is this i still cannot get over the views here in miami it is just everywhere you go it is breathtaking and beautiful standing now is where anybody from the general public can come and rock up and watch the show jumping on the beach here but also there's a course walk going on behind me and we have so many famous faces from Laura Kraut to Ben Mayer but also look how close I am to these fences it feels like I can almost touch them I'm only a few meters away but if you think the view here is incredible let me show you this next one because we're going to the top of the stands <laughs> no bad view up here I've got to say it is just absolutely breathtaking with the turquoise blue sea the sunny skies but also you can see every single fence from up here what more could you want from a horse show the athletes currently walking the course ready for the Longines Global Champions League so we have all the teams together some walking together talking about tactics how they're going to approach some of the fences we have the crowd waiting eagerly let's go
my goodness, how fantastic was that? I'd just like to say a huge congratulations to the Berlin Eagles on winning this leg of the Global Champions League. How awesome. Also, we are now just about to go and do a course walk for the Grand Prix. The highlight of this weekend, also the last class. So a bit bittersweet that it's soon going to be over, but I'm really looking forward to it. Look how full up these fences are. In comparison, I'm around five foot six, so it's almost as tall as me. So let's go and find one of the top riders here and do a course walk and find out a little bit more about what's in store for the Grand Prix. So I'm now here with Geordie and we're doing a little bit of a course walk. So tell me about this fence here because you were just saying that it's going to be a little bit of a trickier one here yeah, on course. I think this might be one of the first uh, where some are going to have a mistake. It's quite skinny fence. We are lucky he put a pole on top of the gate, um, but I think the first two lines is a bit long distance, so people try to go a bit forward. Yep. And then um, this might be one of the first ones where we're going to have some mistakes. So definitely one to look out for then. We've really got to be concentrating going into it. Right, a little bit into the corner is always difficult. So I think, uh, okay, it's still early in the course, but I think it's uh, tricky enough this fence. For fence number eight, we have a lighthouse with a plank on top. Do you think this one's going to be all right? Um, I think the only thing that might come out of the turn, so it might disturb a little bit the balance, but I think they are all experienced riders, so I think they will manage quite fine uh, here. The line just before against the beach might be a bit tricky from the triple bar down to the double. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit short four. And then to stretch out on the oxer might get some mistakes on the back curl, I think. Um, also the vertical just after the black vertical into the corner again. It's quite tall vertical, might be okay, but I think like here the plank, I think they will do quite fine. It's quite filled up. There's no uh, really Liverpools or anything, so I think they will manage this one. And what sort of horse do you think thrives here in Miami? I think you need to have one that is very careful. Not too spooky, preferable with the beach just next yes. to it. Yes. Um, but for sure you need a bloody horse that is very careful um, and that moves quick over the ground because the times are short and you don't really have time to catch up during the course so you mm. need to be from fence one. And there are a lot of twisty turns as well and that yes. really eats up your energy so you definitely need one with speed. Yes and also when you have a bit of a bigger horse the turning makes it a little bit disturbs the balance quite easy so if you have a, a little bit not too tall horse it's quite easy to keep it back in balance and in position and move on quickly but if you have a bigger horse it takes some more time and and everything gets a little bit slower and the clock might uh, keep on ticking. So. Yes, and how have your horses been here in Miami? Um, I can't complain. The first day I had the last fence down in the team competition, which was good. And then I jumped uh, Chestnut again in the team competition today, not for the team. Um, and I had one down and some time faults. I started a bit too slow from straight away from the first fence and it got a bit expensive in the end. Um, but okay, it's my first Globo, so I'm not too unhappy. And then now I'm just, uh, I think, first or second out for the Grand Prix. So I'm going to have to uh, be patient for Mexico and uh, give everything there. Oh, well, best of luck with that. Thank you so much for your time. No, no worries. Thank you. Before the Grand Prix starts, I thought I would show you the size of this triple bar because it is a wide one, but also I thought I'd show you the crowd because they are only a few feet away from this fence, eagerly waiting the next class. Whole squad wearing all black, motivations looking real bad, huh? We back to the bone, raising a fire alone. We ain't never needed nobody, give me six feet, this is my party. Ain't got no feelings, we heartless. Take a peek inside the darkness. Blow up the spot, then we run it. Ready or not, here we coming. Somebody better say a prayer for me. Tonight may get a little crazy. You can meet me outside, but you better buckle up. It's a wild ride. Welcome to the wild side. Oh my goodness, what an absolutely incredible last couple of days. I'd just like to say a huge congratulations to Katrin Eckerman on winning the Grand Prix. That jump off though, oh my goodness, it was so tense. Some of the turns were so tight that I'm pretty sure Ben Mayer's horse at some stage almost jumped over a flower pot to get around the bend. 
but it was just absolutely fabulous to watch and I still cannot get over how beautiful the scenery is here in Miami with the sea in the background. I've had the most fabulous time here so I just want to say a huge thank you to the Longines Global Champions Tour and the league as well for very kindly inviting me here today. I've had so much fun learning more about the show and the league. Also I love the aspect um, of, with show jumping having the teams as well. It really gets everyone in the spirit and and cheering on their favorite team but anyway i just want to say a huge thank you to you guys for watching today's video if you're new or have not done so already please like and subscribe it really does help me out and i really do appreciate it and hopefully see you guys at the london global champions tour as well thanks for watching bye